Hello, uh, welcome to this third lunch break webinar. Um, today I'm going to tell you about the differences and similarities between the LPC family and the VLC family. And my name is Bas Hoxberger and I'm the architectural market manager at Varos. Um, I'll be your host as well as the presenter of today's webinar. I'm, um, I'm backed up by Ryan Sainsbury, technical project specialist at Faros. He's here to answer any questions uh, or might chime in verbally if, um, if required. So the aim is to have a uh, 15 to 20 minute presentation and then a Q&A session to answer possible questions. Uh, at the bottom of your screen, you will see a Q&A button. This can be used to ask any questions uh, that we'll try to answer. Um, in case you would like to uh, ask your question verbally, um, uh, just raise your hand or um, contact us via chat and we will make that happen. Um, there's quite a lot to tell this time, so probably I will take up all the questions at the end uh, and questions mid-time are, um, yeah, are, are all um, answered in the end of the meeting. If you have any questions about uh, the Zoom software or experience any technical issues, uh, please just type the chat. Uh, Ryan is there to help you out. So before we start, let me um, put up this poll. Um, and I'm very interested to learn what controllers you have worked with before. Is that only controllers from the LPC family or might you have worked with um, the um, VLC range as well, the VLC family? And I'm looking to the audience, seems quite a mixed audience again. Some people who are quite new, some people who have quite a lot of experience. Um, there's interesting training videos online for those who get started. Um, and if you have any questions, of course, we're always there to help you um, either like this or um, via mail afterwards. Okay, um, thanks all for your answers. Let me just share the results with you. Um, uh, if that, uh, the same time as last, yeah, that window moved out again. Um, sharing the result is something I will not be able to do right now, um, but I can tell you most of the people are new to the VLC family, so I guess this webinar is a good topic. Um, I want, I guess, this is the time to get started. So we're going to talk about four things. Where the first thing is, of course, really explaining the differences in the concept from the LPC to the VLC family talk about similarities, um, give some advice how to figure out what controller to use. Um, and I'm not spoiling the surprise that for the fourth topic we will be going into. Now, let me explain the LPC family concept. So the LPC family is the, um, um, the LPC controllers, obviously, but also the TPC. Um, all these controllers, they... Um, you always start with a layout where any of the fixtures from the library can be added to. And this is quite an extensive library. I mean, there's even more to download from the website. And let me go to the file I prepared. Because um, you can see this can be everything from movers, from fixtures that have, you know, RGB, Ember, UV, all types of different color combinations. Um, uh, fixtures with multiple instances, pretty much you name it, any type of fixture we support can be put it on these type uh, on these layouts. Um, fountain fixtures is not a, one of those uh, gems hidden inside our software. Um, these fixtures show on your layout in different sizes and um, we can even do what we call our instances. So this is a single fixture and this single fixture, we have just put three times on the map for simulation purposes. Now, from this layout, I can create groups. And the reason why I create groups is twofold. The first one is to, um, well, to, to get a bit of organization. And the second reason is that groups are what we program against. And creating a group is as simple as selecting the fixtures and hitting the group icon. Um, so we can see here, I've got all these different groups created. Beside groups um, or within a group, there's always an order of fixtures. And when we apply effects on this group later on, it's using this order of fixtures. Now, sometimes we might want to use the, the position of a fixture relative to each other. And in that case, when we select a group of fixtures, we can create a matrix. And when I create a matrix, and let me just do that again, 
I can go into the mapping tab and the mapping tab is show me how that 2D um, setup is looking. And as you can see for convenience, I um, added this to my layout to, to show how it looks. The beauty of the LPC family is that I can make multiple matrices that even can include the same fixtures. So I might sometimes want to use their actual position, how they are laid out, but maybe in some other cases I want to, well, in this case, clean it up like the fixtures are installed in a nice array. So I'm sure that this left column, meaning these fixtures are all going on at the same time um, when I have a, a simple chase um, or a simple wave running. Um, so the other thing to note when working with the, the LPC family is you're able to create multiple layouts. And on these layouts, you're able to completely patch fixtures to different controllers completely free. So in this case, if this would have been an installation, I've got all my fixtures patched to one controller, maybe this top left is to one controller, top right and the bottom again to another controller. The fact that they are patched to different controllers doesn't matter for control because when I'm programming an L something, uh, when I'm programming the LPC family, I'm using groups and I'm using matrices and that's it. So how does that look? Let me go back like this. So I've created here a timeline and on this timeline, there's all these different types of effects I put on there. Um, and let me simulate this and let me double check. Or so if I'm simulating this timeline, if I play this back, what does it do? Every moment, it's just saying playback this preset on this matrix, now play back that preset on that matrix, etc. So we are applying, um, we're telling the system when to play back what preset at what group or at what matrix. Let me maybe simulate this like this. Um, and go back to this one. We of course have the ability to play back different timelines. So right now I'm playing back this first timeline I just showed you. If I would now start a second timeline that only plays green on group four, of course this is happening because I tell it should happen and just as much I can release it again. The same thing with um, a timeline three, which is making, well, maybe a bit difficult to see, timeline three, which is making um, the group, uh, group five go blue. Always it's taking latest stakes present. So I always just tell what presets should play back on what group. If necessary, you can do some tricks with higher priority as Brian explained in last webinar as well. So right now I can do whatever I want because this timeline has a higher priority. It will continue to show. Um, the LPC family, so any fixture type, you can use instances, you can make up to a thousand groups, 256 matrices, you can make up to 64 layouts and split it as you want up to 40,000 fixtures over 40 controllers. So it's all one system that acts as one. And these are all pretty cool and impressive limits, but then people came up to us with projects like these. In this case, it is not about groups or it's not about, um, yeah, but what people are looking for is just something different to play back video in a very big way. So let me share my screen again. Um, if you're making a VLC project, let me say a VLC project, you receive, or you, you see a layout. And this layout, it's having the name of the controller because what is different with the VLC family versus the LPC family, every controller, uh, let me call this um, some name, every controller has exactly one layout. The same concept as before applies that on this layout, you can put fixtures. Oh, let me zoom in a bit. On the layout, you can uh, drag and drop fixtures, but you see the library over here, it's not longer supporting some of the exotics items. The VLC family supports any type of um, RGB, RGB ember, RGB white or white fixtures, but it doesn't do temperature control or moving heads or any of these other items. Um, so I can drag 
fixtures to it. I can also drag um, um, composite fixtures on there. So fixtures that consist of multiple elements. And let me actually open up a file I prepared because that will be a bit better to preview. So in this case, I have a very simple mate or a very simple layout with uh, a grid of fixtures. And even though there is a group fixture on the left, I can use this to create a group, but these groups are only used for organization because the concept to playback video or the, the concept to, to uh, the VLC family uses is completely different. The VLC family, um, I can show the best one to go into the mapping tab. The VLC um, family is creating compositions and in the composition, you're creating a, what we call a content target where the video is being played back. So you can see, I can make it very large. I can make it small. And in this window or in this content target, as we call it in here is where we're going to play back the content. Um, there are some, oh, let me be sure you're going to see actually my screen in this moment. Um, wrong one. Here we go. There are some convenient um, buttons available over here to make it snap to your complete layout or let it snap to your fixtures. In this case, I've prepared multiple compositions. So for example, I've got this one, which is snapping exactly around the fixtures. I've made another one that is playing back, let's say in an oversized way. Now, when I make uh, compositions, I can do something more and that's what we call creating an instance. Right now, my content will play back here. So my video will play back into this content target, but I can create a duplicate of that and play back the content in there as well. So the same content what's playing on the left will play on the right. When I do this, I can do a small trick as well that I can choose to mirror that instance. So you have the VLC, you have created a layout with your fixtures. In the mapping, you created multiple targets. Now, how does that look to play it back or, or how to use that? If we go to the timeline, we see that just there's only one, um, one row where we can put back context. I don't have groups even, and let me just demonstrate that, even if I would make a lot of groups, you see those groups are not available for um, playback because the controller, the, the VLC has the ability to play back a video or an effect on top of a composition. Um, right now I'm choosing to simulate like I have live video, but of course I can also play back a color or play back a video um, or anything I, I want. But you see for all those presets, when I put it on the timeline, I have this element here called um, the content properties, where do I want to play back the content? Let me show you how that looks. Let me play this back. Be sure that I have simulate on. One second, simulate. Uh, one second, here we go. So I am playing back, in this case, simulating live, live video on my uh, VLC and I'm using the composition. I set that as fit. In this case, and my, my um, effect, so which is this sample image because I don't actually have a VLC connected at the moment, uh, the different colored bars, it is showing to exactly fit to my fixtures. If I choose to play this back on another composition, let's use the oversized one. You see, I'm now playing back the video on an extremely large area. And my fixtures are only covering small part of that. So it's only showing back on a smaller element. In the same way, I can play it back on the two instance, instances what I made. So right now I see this content, uh, the, the bars from red all the way up to uh, white. I see the two times next to each other. Or if I use the composition where the right part is mirrored, it will look like this. I'm able to do the same things on a timeline. And this is maybe a bit easier to understand it. For the first one, I use the composition where it exactly fits on the content, uh, fits on the fixtures. The second one, 
it's using the two instances. So you see it just nicely plays twice. The third one, I put it on something uh, where I mirror the right part. So my content is now nicely um, mirroring to, to be sure it, it flows nicely from one side to the right. I use the oversized element. So you can see the center of the, um, the center is actually somewhere on the right bottom of my screen because I'm zoomed in if, uh, as you want. Um, and the last part, and you see this content looks a bit blurry and that's right because one of the additional features you can apply to every composition you made, or actually to, to be more precise to every content target, you can add a blurring to the feature. And I think you can see this changing pretty well on the preview too. Um, a big benefit of applying this blurring is when you're dealing with direct view applications where there's a fuser, uh, diffuser material in front of the LEDs. Um, experience shows that very often content might look a bit too sharp if you don't apply any blurring, but if you use one or two blurring or more blurring rings, the visual uh, perception of the installation get, gets much better. Um, so important to understand, even though you can make multiple timelines, the VLC will just always play back um, one video at a time. Internally, there are two what we call players. So you can fade from one video to the other video, but that's it. In the VLC family, you control how a video plays back on top of the fixtures. Um, and this is very convenient, especially if you have a setup that is, well, let's say simple like this, where it's just one, um, yeah, really just one, one straight installation. But we know a lot of you users, they have installations that are, are slightly more complicated as you wish. Um, they might either have, as you see on the left top, they might have two different, um, sort of like two different screens. Or as the picture on the right top, they might have a, a uh, canvas that is wrapped completely around the building. Or yeah, like the London Eye, and we have another uh, installation going on at the moment where there should be content playing on a large wheel, but the wheel of course rotates and the content needs to stay leveled. Or is this image on the right where it's a bit hard to see on the image, but there's a part of the screen that has a higher resolution than the rest of the installation. Um, the VLC family has solutions for that too. And let me show you how that looks. Right now, I created a project where my controller is a VLC plus. So the bigger brother from the VLC uh, compared to the VLC, but both belong to the same family. I created a layout. Let me maybe make the background, oh, background a bit lighter to show that better. I created a background where I have some fixtures. I don't know if that's good visible on the screen, but I have, um, some lines of fixtures with a bit of separation. And in the middle are two elements that are filled completely with pixels. So this is an installation where you have a, low resolu a lower resolution content and higher resolution uh, screens inside. Um, the basics for the VLC Plus is still the same. I add my fixtures to the layout. I can, again, use RGB, RGB white, all these type of things. Um, yeah, but I can't add moving heads or I can't change the size of fixtures because every pixel is just looking to a pixel on the screen. The change for this VLC plus family comes at the mapping tab. Um, let me turn this off. Um, because I can play back a primary target like I could before, but they have the ability to also play a second video or I get a second target. So right now, if I go to the timeline, I have a primary player, so to say, or a primary um, line within all the timelines I can program content to and a second line. Let me show the preview how that looks. Right now I'm playing back content pretty straightforward. 
because I'm using the simple one, uh, yeah, the simple content target, the one I'm using here. But at the same time, oh, go back to the timeline, I can now add, and let me maybe use a little video. I can play back another piece of video, which I'm gonna, which I want to play back in here. And you can see the video nicely fades in. If I go back again, the content is not playing and it nicely fades in at the right moment, or it's actually it snapped in in this case because I told it to snap. Um, but I can play back two videos at the same time. Now this is already quite convenient. And let me go to a composition that I prepared that looks slightly better. I can have one video playing at the back um, at the background. One video playing at the background, and at some moment I'm playing start to play the higher resolution content on uh, the screens that are inside, and the other video just continues on the background. Let me change my background color to make the simulation a bit better. So that's one benefit of the, the VLC plus. So in the VLC family, in this case, I can I'm able to play back how videos plural play back on my um, on my canvas. Um, but the VLC plus actually has more uh, power up its sleeve. Let me show you that with this example. Um, if I'm playing back, oh, let me temporarily remove this. If I would play back the video on my canvas like this, of course, this element on the right will not do anything. Let me show that that's indeed the case. Let me go to a timeline, play back content. I'm playing back the content on this um, map I was just making. No, oh, bad example. Let me select some better content. So you see it's now playing back only at, at part of the screen. But when I go to the mapping tab on the VLC family, on the VLC for, that's valid for the VLC plus, I have the ability to wrap the content. And right now, let's say the content that is um, hidden on the right, if I turn wrapping on, that content appears on the left again. I don't know if you can, let me maybe make it some better content than this one. This looks maybe a bit better. If I turn wrapping off, you can see on the left of the screen, there's nothing playing. If I turn wrapping on, it starts to show. So the benefit for this controller would be that I can move my canvas and the VLC allows to do that in real time to move the canvas over the building. And let's assume this content goes or this installation goes all the way around the building. Um, my content target can nicely move around the building and the seam, so where the, yeah, where let's say the, the edge of the building, you can make it move to wherever you want to um, and be sure that people from who look to the building from different sides will always have the best possible content view. Um, the other cool feature the VLC Plus has up its sleeve is when you are, um, let me see if this works. If I have my content target, so I say I want to play back video on here, I have the image or I have the ability to load this into or to make it more rounder. So to play back the content round if I want to. And I can even give it soft edges. It's a bit hard to see in preview. But I can also load an image. This is just a very simple black and white image. And when I load this image, I can choose to say, I want to only play back on, on parts of that mask. Um, uh, oh yeah, only play on part of that mask. Let me show you how that looks. Let me put this away. This was the example I was working on. Right now, I am playing back on the content um, Mark Harvest parts, and that is this video. 
if I would play it on everywhere, it looks like this, but I can choose an image. And right now the video will only play at the element of this image. The cool thing is that masks also supports what we call, uh, well, also supports gradients. So right here, I have a slightly different image and you can see it if you look closely that there's now, let's say a bit of bleeding around the edge. If I'm playing it back on that other content target, you see I have a nice way to make the content bleed over into a different um, element. Um, there's even one more option possible. Um, and I think I have prepared that as too the high res parts, oh, uh, this one. I've made another map and in that map, I'm selecting only the low resolution lines. So I have the ability to play back the video only on that element. And then at the moment when I want to, let me play this back again. Only at the moment I want to, I can start to play back a video or an effect on those. Um, High elements. These maps have much more tricks up their sleeve. You can have multiple instances. It can do rotation, it can do movement, a lot of things, but that's a bit outside of the scope. And I see time is going fast. So let me see um, if I can speed this up. Um, the VLC family has really high limits. Um, let me try to show it like this. I mean, the VLC family can go up to 3000 um, universe from a single device. These compositions can be extremely large. Um, you can make multiple content targets, multiple instances, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, as of time, I will move on quickly, but I guess the, con the element to understand here, of course, the with the VLC family, you determine how the video plays back on top of your fixtures. Now, those were the differences. When it comes to similarities, it's actually quite simple, and you've seen the biggest one already. Um, I am play, I'm using Designer to set up both families. So everything like patching or adding remote devices, it's all the same. Also, both uh, support um, the same triggering. So like I.O. modules or um, integration with whatever type of system, everything is the same, regardless if you work with the Designer family or the VLC family. Um, also, the same is true for the custom web interfaces for cloud compatibility. And I guess to say it's simple, both are firewalls. So they're both extremely reliable boxes. So what controller to need in what situation? Um, I hope this examples uh, explained a bit. The LPC family is great to control groups of fixtures exactly how you want, where the VLC is used to playback video or videos on top of your layout. Some of these elements, independent group control, so control the groups one by one or to do some specific transitions, those are unique to the LPC family, while some other items like doing mov uh, movement or rotation are unique to the VLC family. But it's important to understand that, you know, to play back a video, both of these families can do, or to play back live live video, so coming from a, a DVI source, both of these can do. And both families have the ability to control a lot of universes. So the one on top, it's the concept about what you're looking. Is it that I want to play back video on a very large, um, on, on top of my layout, or is it that I want to do group control and maybe play some video too? That's the difference to figure out which controller you need. Um, the last topic I want to touch on was the, the, the part which was still a surprise because of course, the thing about being firewalls, because they use the same system, it is possible to combine controllers from the different families into a single show. Um, that is pretty simple. And um, I'll show you a sample in a second. The only thing I want to highlight from this page as well, and I guess we should be seeing this now. Yeah. Um, if you're not sure about some of the technical differences between the LPC or VLC family, which one has a DVI input or, or what triggers does it support on our website, on the products controllers, which controller do I need section? We have a very nice comparison tool to show all the detailed um, differences between, for example, a VLC or an LPCX. Um, 
we are running out of time. Um, I'm gonna very quickly share my screen to show a project that has both controllers combined, just to show how that might look. Um, you remember this from the start of this webinar. I've added additional controllers, which are VLC, actually two VLCs and two VLC pluses. They just appear on the top as additional tabs. Um, when I go to the mapping tab, I can switch between using the pixel matrix, which the LPC family is using, and the compositions, which the VLC family are using. But when I go to a timeline, I can just program my effects and all the different VLCs from a single row. Um, I guess that brings me to the end of this session, which was a bit um, more to tell than could fit in the time. So I hope everybody could make that, but are there any questions from people at this moment? Um, Cause I see one question in the chat um, from Mark. Let me answer that. Are there particular fixtures or um, fixture or types that lend themselves better to display video or does it work with all types? Um, it actually works with all types. I mean, all our controllers, they can operate um, DMX at, at the requested DMX rates. Um, and every DMX fixture you'll find out there will be able to deal with the DMX refresh rates. Um, the, the question whether some manufacturers might be better than others for a certain project will be um, determined by other factors than this. Uh, then I get another question about RDM uh, status, if we can do that. Um, that is something we are looking into, but I want to say stand by for um, more news on that via the newsletters. You can sign up to the Faro's newsletters. And once we have information to share about that, we will let you know. Are there any more questions from people? Okay, I get another request, I think from Alexander that that's a commercial question. Um, I will um, follow up with you after the meeting one by one. Okay, then I think um, with this, uh, I'm reaching the end of the webinar. Um, I hope, I mean, if there's any question that pops up later, you can always reach us via support at farroscontrols.com. Um, and yeah, I mean, we'll do our best to answer you. So um, with this, I'll be ending the webinar. I'd like to thank you for your attendance um, and I hope to see you next time. <laughs>